In this episode, I want to walk you through um, some frequently asked questions that we had come in around direct-to-consumer marketing. So first, I want to clarify what direct-to-consumer marketing is and uh, why it's important for your practice to uh, think about it and likely master it or at least increase your competency there. And then um, we'll break it down into uh, some how-tos as well. So when we think about direct-to-consumer marketing, there are three ways in marketing a private practice that uh, new patients can come in, right? So we'll call them pipelines for lack of a better term. The first one is the traditional way that the bulk of us that have you know, the majority of practice owners that have been around um, you know, 10, 15, 20 years or more, uh, we were, uh, we grew up, grew, grew our practices, uh, started our private practice journey with physician referrals. So pipeline number one is physicians. And this includes, depending on your state, your practice act, uh, nurse practitioners, PAs, dentists, et cetera. But it's essentially a, a physician to a PT referral, a clinician to PT referral. And uh, so that's number one. Number two is um, your, your past patient list, right? So from our past patient list, that pipeline, we can get uh, past patients returning for additional care. So we saw Mary two years ago for her knee, now she's coming back in for her shoulder pain, right? Or maybe we saw her two years ago for her knee, now she's returning for a uh, reaggravation of her knee issue, right? So that would be a, a past patient reactivation, or we can have word of mouth referrals. So Mary was in in the past for her knee, she referred her friend Connie in for um, another problem that we're helping in PT. So that is pipeline number two, patient list. Number three, is the general public. And so when we're talking about direct to consumer, we're really talking about the second two uh, or the, uh, the final two pipelines here. Uh, the first one is the past patient list. The third one is uh, the general public. So they collectively are direct to consumer. The general public is the you know, research shows that roughly 10% of the public understands um, physical therapy and utilizes it, right? So that's the 10%. 90% um, doesn't understand what PT can do and we're just, you know, greatly underutilized. I think the, the research, if I remember correctly, one study showed that, you know, PT utilization for presentation to a healthcare system for back pain was 7%. Another one I think showed 11%. So um, I think I believe I read in uh, web PT research piece that it was, you know, this 90-10 ratio roughly as well. So only 10% of the people who present uh, in pain to the healthcare system ever receive PT. So number three in this public is we're really going to the 90%. People who don't know, like, and trust us yet, uh, just members of the general public. So they're the three pipelines. Now, why is direct-to-consumer important? Well, uh, you know as well as I do, the research that was published first in the Journal of General Internal Medicine in 2018, and then uh, picked up within, uh, I believe it was uh, one of the APTA publications also in the spring of 2018, showed that between 2003 and 2014, there was a 53.6% decline in physician referrals. That same study, if you go back and, and read the original um, the original research in the Journal of General Internal Medicine, they showed that at the same time, while physician referral to PT decreased, specifically for uh, diagnoses related to back pain, which was the number one referral reason for a physician to PT referral, that the, there was a subsequent increase, uh, inversely proportional increase in referral to a specialist. Why did this happen? Well. Over the last 20 years, the healthcare landscape has greatly changed here in the US. Um, there is you know, conglomeration of uh, hospitals. We, we're now we have these lar very large hospital systems that not only are simply hospitals, but they've also employed the majority of uh, family physicians and many other specialties as well, where they have this all-in-one healthcare or hospital type system. Along the lines, when they employ the physicians, they also capture those referrals internally, right? And 
I mean, you, you can dive pretty deep into just following the money here, but the big idea is that physician referrals, professional referrals to private practice PT has greatly declined. And that those referrals are now going to specialists within uh, the, the healthcare system that the physician operates in. So, so what do we do? Well, if we can't go to the physician and increase our referrals there, and yes, there are still marketing companies within PT that are encouraging you to do something magical with physician referrals. And the, the quick anecdotal story I'll share there is this has not only happened to me, but I've heard, I don't know, 100 plus owners share similar stories. I, I have very good friends that work in the hospital system where our children are growing up together, you know, we're coaching Little League together, we're doing the kids' birthday parties together, hanging out, having a beer together, and they simply cannot refer to us, right? So these are my friends that are employed by the hospital system that are telling me flat out cannot make a referral to you. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's lots of very similar stories all over the US, um, it's not new and unique. So if we can't rely on number one, right, that physician referral pipeline, or it's, let's put it this way, it, the amount of effort required there to move the needle is, uh, is very large. So we, we might not get a really good in turn, uh, return on our time, money, and resource investment um, in number one. I still think it's relevant if you can maintain physician referrals. We still, I mean, it's still nine or 10% of our uh, new patient flow coming in, fantastic. Don't lose that, don't abandon it. Um, but it, it's very difficult to make headway there. And at one point, 10 or 11 years ago for us, I guess it's now 13 years ago, um, we were you know, nearly 100% physician referral, very wide and diversified. We hit over 150 physician referrals in a month for a single site location. Um, and we had over 200 referral sources in any given year. So we didn't abandon it but we saw that it was gradually declining over time. So what we decided to do, and what many owners have decided to do is we'll focus on the last two pipelines, this direct to consumer marketing. And when you master it, um, what you can do is you can go into a new market. Um, so if you're expanding, here's why it's important. If you're expanding, if you're opening de novo clinics in a very short period of time, you can open a clinic and fill the clinic. So uh, we've done this now four times over the last several years. We've helped other owners do it as well through breakthrough. Uh, but you know, for us, um, the first case I'll give, and I just talked with my partner and the director there, uh, Dan. Dan uh, was with us uh, here at our main office for six or seven years. Uh, he was a clinical director in training. We decided to open our third clinic with Dan up in a uh, a small rural town called Dolphin, which is about 20 minutes north of our main office. Um, we opened up in 1,200 square feet in this small town. Uh, and in the office, there was a previous uh, physical therapy clinic there that was there for eight and a half years. It's in a, it's in a building that is owned by the family physician of this small town Dolphin, um, Dr. Brusha. And uh, so Dr. Brush invited us up to look at the space. We opened up there, the previous all time high for visits in a week at that office in eight and a half years um, from the previous um, PT company was 73 visits. And I know that because I know the director um, who ran that clinic for a number of years. So 73 visits, most that they ever did in this 1200 square feet. Um, within one month, um, Dan, eclipsed 100 visits. And I think in week seven, he hit 107 or 108 visits in a week. Um, in the first full year, they were up over 180 visits in a week. How did they do that? When we went back and we did the research break analysis, um, roughly uh, 85 or 90% of those new patients were from our direct to consumer marketing efforts. And you have to realize there wasn't much of a past patient list at that time, that pipeline number two, because uh, you know, the, the clinic was new to that area, right? So not a huge past patient list. The, the bulk of the effort, roughly 90% of the marketing dollars that we had there, we placed into that pipeline number three. 
We did both offline and online marketing direct to the consumer, had adequate patient flow there that they were able to you know, build up to 180 visits a week, which was more than double of uh, what the, the prior PT company had done in eight and a half years. And Dan and the team were able to accomplish that in less than one year in practice. So not only did we do it there, we've done it uh, three additional times in de novo clinics over the last uh, 12 months now, 12, 15 months. Like I said, other owners have do, done it as well. So that's why direct to consumer is important. Now, how do we do that? Okay, so we need direct to consumer marketing to survive. How do we do that? How do we think through this? Well, I'm gonna give you three big categories to think of. Number one, um, and by the way, all this is under the, the large premise of there's a right way to do this and a wrong way to do direct to consumer marketing. Most of us, uh, and my, myself included, especially in the early years, were, we lacked discernment in terms of looking at marketing or advertising. I recall um, when I started doing direct to consumer act, advertising and when Pennsylvania got direct access in 2004 and uh, you know that, that movement started to take place here and it kind of opened up the doors for therapists to advertise direct to the consumer, even though legally we could have, we could have done it beforehand. Right, that doesn't stop the large pharmaceutical companies from advertising direct to the consumer, even though they need a script. But I, I started watching what other PT companies were doing here in central Pennsylvania. And most of them were just running branding messages. In fact, I would say all of them were running branding messages. And it was really a focus on ourselves. So we're the premier provider. We have, you know, we're direct access certified. I'm not even sure what that means, or you know, our therapist now have direct access. That is really a message for us, for PTs. That's PT to PT language. Patients don't really care about that. The, the you know, Direct access is just a small speed bump in the road that they get to overcome a little bit more easily to get access to a PT. Um, what patients care about and what patients are thinking about is, I have a problem. It's usually knee or shoulder, back, hip, whatever, lymphedema, a gait dysfunction or balance issue, whatever it may be. And I, I want this problem to go away, right? That's kind of how the patient is thinking. They're not thinking about access to care or anything. So the majority of the advertising at that time, and this is 2000, 2000, 2004, 2005 in central Pennsylvania was around this branding. And frankly, that hasn't changed much uh, across the entire country. And if, if you, you know, blindly look at other PTs that are advertising, most physical therapists are still using that, you know, we're the premier provider, we're the premier PT service provider. They're using a focus on us first, right? That is not the right way to go about this. So I told you we're going to break this down into three components. Here they are. Component number one of how we want to attract direct to consumer clients is um, we want to think about the 90-10 rule. And this is it. So there's this idea in marketing called push-pull marketing. Pull marketing is for people who already know, like, and trust you. This is the 10% uh, the 10% that has already utilized physical therapy of the population. They know what physical therapy is. They're going to, uh, they're past patients that are becoming reactivated. So you're marketing to them through your newsletter, your emails, right, um, and promotions that you're running there. It's the people that are Googling you, right? The, the common misconception, common pitfall uh, that we fell under early on is we thought that uh, Google advertising, Google ads were targeting the 90%. They are not. Google ads rarely make a dent in reaching the 90% of the market. Because if you think about it, if I'm in the 10% of the market, so I've been to your physical therapy place before, I've had a problem in the past and you've helped me, right? I already know, like, and trust you. Now, if I have something in the future, again, I may, you know, Google the name of your physical therapy office. So ABC physical therapy, I see the ad, I see the ad, I click on the ad and I call your number and I schedule another appointment in the future, right? That Google's not doing much. I, I think it's necessary to have the right mechanisms in place, the right systems in place, and you 
I'm absolutely supportive and encouraging Google Ads, but I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you think you're, that you're reaching the 90% um, in, a, in a broad, efficient, effective way long term, right? It's for, in, in that scenario that I just went through, I'm not only problem aware, I have a shoulder problem, a musculoskeletal injury, but I'm also very solution aware. And I'm likely Googling physical therapy. Most people are not doing that. And for years, we asked this question um, on webinars uh, to hundreds of PTs, and we pretty much got the same answer 99.9% .9 of the time, and it was this. If you went up to 100 people in your town and asked them that were suffering with back pain or shoulder pain, and you asked them where they would go for treatment, what do you think they would say? The four most common answers, and remember, this is asking physical therapist this question. The four most common answers were, family physician, urgent care, or the emergency room, ER. Number three was massage therapist. Number four was chiropractor, right? So this is asking physical therapist where people in their town would go for pain. And PTs, nearly 100% of the time, right off the bat are just saying, you know what? That's not us. Um, it's really, that they would, they would go see these other people first, right? We're not even in the top four. And I think we should be number one. I believe that we offer the best outcomes in all of healthcare for the lowest possible cost, right? We're at the bottom of the totem pole in reimbursements and we're near the top in terms of outcomes, if not by far the top, right? So dollar per outcome, we rank very, very highly. So having said that, right, we have to be, and the subsequent thought that comes up there frequently is, well, if more people in my town just knew, in my area, just knew what physical therapy could do for them, right? That's what we're doing in direct to consumer marketing. So Google ads don't really solve that for us. Um, and we have to think through, is the marketing action that we're doing addressing the 10%, which is where everybody's battling, right? Or the 90%, the, the people who don't know, like, and trust us yet. And traditionally, historically in private practice PT, especially we've really battled over those 10%. It's kind of a, a bloodied waters a, a little bit. Uh, it's highly competitive where rather than fighting over the 10% that the physicians are referring to us or on our past patient list or people that are already aware of what PT can do for them, there's this vast opportunity, this blue ocean um, and blue ocean strategy, if you will, of, you know, going to, understand how to play in this 90%. It's the biggest area for arbitrage. It's where we can move the needle the most. And again, we, we kind of had to prove it as we were opening the de, de novo clinics going into brand new towns that weren't aware or didn't have uh, the physical therapy awareness um, because the previous PT clinics that operated in those towns didn't really understand how to go direct to the consumer. So number one is this 90-10 rule, right? We can do push marketing which is to the 90%, and that's gonna be print ads, radio, television, Facebook, uh, Instagram, messages, the type of messaging that provides value. And again, there's a right way, right and wrong way to do that. Um, or we can focus on the 10%, right? And what I'm, what I'm seeing from experience and in the data is that you have to do both. You have to play in the 10% and take care of the people who already know, like, and trust you and understand that physical therapy is a solution. And then you have to understand how to confidently play and market um, to the 90% as well. Number two is direct response. So anytime that we're attempting to attract someone, right, we can do a branding type message, which is we're great, or it has our logo, um, or it, it, there's some sort of focus on us, or we can choose to go the other direction, which is direct response. And what direct response does is it gets people who potentially may benefit from physical therapy and consume our services or buy our products, it gets them to raise their hand, right? The other thing that it does is it helps us remain scientific with our marketing ad spend, and it helps us measure an immediate, uh, immediate return in terms of the low-hanging fruit, right? So let's say we are advertising um, in our area, and I'll just, I'll use a quick example of a, a, a television ad that we ran, right? It was a 30-minute slot 
on uh, WHTM TV 21, if you want to get really nerdy about this, or very detailed, highly detailed. And uh, that spot, in the end, let's say we invested $2,000 there. So from that, um, we had eight new patients come in immediately, right? So our direct return, we invest $2,000, and let's say we got $8,000 back in plans of care. That's the immediate low-hanging fruit. The, so, and that's the direct response, right? It's the, the people saw this 30-minute television spot, and they called in, and they ultimately um, came in for an IE and scheduled a plan of care, right? That's direct response, very measurable. The other thing, the other benefit, when you do direct response the right way, the best way, what happens is you get this, this long tail. This, it, it's essentially a branding effect, um, but without focusing on how great we are, how premier we are, um, what certifications we have, or what type of treatment we do. But what happens is when we ran the television ad, not only did those eight people see the television ad, or the Facebook ad, or the print ad, or whatever it is that we're doing, there were also thousands of other people that were influenced. So what happened is we noticed a bump in our uh, past patients returning for additional care around what we talked about in the 30 minute television ad, right? So they weren't coming in through the TV ad, but the TV ad was just a touch point that increased our past patients returning for additional care. We saw the same increase in word of mouth referrals when we run the television ad. We saw the same increase uh, from our, our online marketing and social media results um, that where we were driving to a workshop, we got a bump there as well. So there, we not only direct response gets people to raise their hand and convert immediately. The reason that's important is we have an immediate ROI that we can measure. The benefit when it's done the right way is we also get this bonus, this tail uh, of, of bump that I've heard owners call it the rising tide effect where all of their other marketing works better as well. So that's number two. So we're talking about direct to consumer advertising and the three components of a successful attraction when we decide to implement direct to consumer advertising within our business. Number one was the 90-10, that push-pull marketing uh, and how the greatest area for opportunity, the greatest opportunity is learning how to play in the 90 because most therapists simply haven't uh, given thought to that. They, you know, they, they're playing in the 10% and thinking that they're doing really well in the 90 um, and that you can master both. The second one is we want to do direct response um, so that we can be scientific with our marketing ad spend. And the third one is patient education. And uh, this is uh, pretty simple, but anytime that we go direct to the consumer with a message, there are essentially three things that we can offer. So number one is uh, we always want to lead with value when we're marketing direct to the consumer. We want to understand the questions that our prospective patients are asking themselves, the conversation already going on in their head. We want to provide value there. And then ultimately, we want to make them an offer. There are three things we can offer. Number one is we can offer them a product, right? So you might be offering, you know, a free sample of BioFreeze or a, ther you know, a strip of TheraBand or something like that. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing that. We, that is our lowest performer in, in any test we've ever run, but there are practices that do that. The second type of thing that we can offer is a service, right? And you can certainly offer, there are a lot of practices right now offering free exams or a discovery type visit um, that I want to encourage doing that all the time. Um, I think that cheapens your brand a little bit over time, just going that route. But nonetheless, uh, we, we do it. We just, we do it less than 10% of the time, but um, it, it certainly can work. Um, I just don't, I, again, I don't see the long-term sustained effect, but we can do a discounted or free service. So a discovery visit, we can do, you know, I've seen practices offer discounted massage and then, you know, the massage therapist ultimately converts that person over into a therapy session or a therapy eval. We've seen uh, discounted, you know, group 
fitness classes or something along in the fitness industry or nutrition, same idea there. So you're offering some sort of uh, loss leader or tripwire up front to ultimately attract more, um, more physical therapy clients. The third category, so we have product, service, the third category is information. And hands down, if you provide good information up front uh, that resonates with your public and you make them an offer for more information, you're usually going to have your highest converter in that category. So for us, examples include uh, we've, we've offered reports or a download of a report um, around different types of problems like back pain, rotator cuff, uh, spine and orthopedic issues. We've offered a book, right? We have a, a back pain book. Uh, actually, we've published two now that we, we've offered there as well for more content. We've offered uh, online video courses for people with uh, various problems and our wheelhouse is the workshop, right? So the workshop is where somebody registers um, online um, or with online or offline marketing media, they call our office or they go to a landing page and register for this event. They show up at the event. We talk about the problem for an hour or so at the workshop, um, two-way communication with, with the entire room. And then we offer those people an appointment. Um, and that has, con I mean, that's our wheelhouse. That's how we go into other areas that dolphin, uh, Dan and dolphin case study that I, uh, briefly went over with you, uh, in the beginning, that's exactly what he did. He did to hit the ground running there and do hundred plus visits, uh, within the first month or so. And, uh, he started with two workshops at that clinic before we even opened the doors. Um, and that's what drove a lot of the uh, new patient flow, at least um, initially. And as that clinic has now in its third year, we're seeing you know more and more past patients return for additional care, and it's a much more balanced. But in the beginning, first couple of years, it was almost um, all direct to consumer via the general public. But we focus on patient education. And uh, if you see our marketing messages, they're, they're very, uh, very little talking about us, about how great we are or the results we get or anything like that. And they're very much focused on the patient, understanding the questions that the patient is asking, when they have uh, different musculoskeletal or spine problems. And we're helping that we're providing them information along the way, answering their most uh, common fears, concerns, and questions. So again, just a quick recap here and we'll wrap this up. Direct to consumer marketing, we went over what it is, um, why it's important for practices, especially right now. Uh, and then in the how-to, we, we talked about attraction um, on three different levels, three different components. We talked about the 90-10, the push-pull marketing. If we're going to do this right, the right way, we not only want to nail the 10% and be very good, which most of the private practice PT market is doing, we also want to be highly competent in going uh, to the 90%, right? That push marketing to the 90%. We also want to use direct response, which was the second component there. And the third component is rather than focus on ourselves, we're going to focus on educating the patients. Now behind it, for many of us, especially if you're brand new to thinking about direct to consumer marketing, it's easy to just stop right there. However, if you're a private practice veteran and you've had attempts um, some successful, some maybe not so successful in uh, direct to consumer marketing, there's usually uh, a, a, another big gap. And that gap is conversion. Uh, so step number one is attract. Step number two is we have to convert the people that we're attracting. Uh, attracting. So I'll record another segment on that. We'll talk about the, the four components of conversion and ultimately how you can get more out of your direct to consumer marketing. Remember to visit getbreakthrough.com to access our free resource library designed specifically for private practice growth. While you're there, make sure you register for a complimentary growth assessment to learn about potential opportunities for growth in your local market. Again, thank you for tuning into the Grow Your Practice podcast and supporting our mission to help people in pain get back to normal naturally.